And now a new survey has revealed that almost half of us don't take our health seriously until we approach 40 because we do not feel like we're old enough to be concerned. Um, I, I definitely sort of shifted my health anxiety as I sort of hit 40, if I'm being honest. I think maybe having children changed it. Mm. Um, but something made you have to really focus on your health just this year. Oh, yeah, I, I had a... Um, I had, well, I ended up in an emergency back surgery. I'm sorry if you've heard it, heard the story. But have you heard no. the story? OK, oh, right. Well, I prolapsed my disc and um, I just kept working through it, you know, and, and trying to sort of push on through. I had been warned, look, it's, it's escalating and you might need surgery. And I obviously didn't want surgery whatsoever. So I kind of tried everything with a the physio um, therapy. Then they did steroid injections. And at that point, steroid injections were amazing. It was like the first time in months I felt like I can walk, I have no pain. But after five days, I was flat on my back and um, they were only just masking. And, and you were probably doing yourself more damage I did. because you're, I did. you're masking the actual pain. And I was, yeah. It escalated so bad that they, you know, they finally got me, they got me into the hospital. Um, it was a bit of a panic for poor old Roe and the kids. Um, and it, they had me in the hospital, stabilising for five days, and they said, look, we're going to let the pain dwell down, and once you're stable, we're going to get you home, see the kids for 24 hours, and we'll bring you in for an operation. I went, fine, no problem, that sounds great. Um, by then, I had accepted that there was no other option but surgery. However, on day three, I woke up in the surgery and um, in the hospital, and everything from my waist down was completely numb. It was oh all my gone. God. My legs, my bowel, my bladder, the lot. And I quickly called my surgeon and said, it's gone, I've lost everything, I, I, I can't move. And he said, I'll be with you in two minutes' time. Um, literally got to the hospital, they whisked me into the theatre, they did an emergency operation. My condition had kicked into what's called Corda Aquina syndrome. And it's a very rare diagnosis, um, but it's when the nerves are compressing so much on the spine that it, it begins paralysis from the waist down. And, you know, if... If, if left, you, yeah, you, you sort of, you end up without anything. Um, you know, you're in a wheelchair with nappies and... What was Roe's reaction? I mean, that was, oh. for you, obviously, the most, but for, for, for him. Poor old Roe, well, because of COVID, he couldn't get into the hospital. Mm. So, you know, all he's getting is me on WhatsApp or me on the end of the phone and speaking to the surgeon oh, every sort of half hour for updates. And you've little ones at home. And yeah, like the just, little buds just... at home. He was sitting in the car park oh, and he was just see? crying <clears throat> in the car outside the hospital, waiting to hear how it would go. And um, to be honest, I was still working and keeping myself busy and distracted. Um, but the moment I came out of the surgery um, and the surgeon said to me, you're going to be OK, <sighs> mm. then I just had floods and, and floods. Are you, are you and fully OK here. now, Storm? No, no, I'm not. Uh, well, I am. I'm doing great. I'm walking, obviously. I've got my legs, I've got my bowel, my bladder, so that's all good. Um, I've got my right leg is still um, probably 50% numb and my foot. Um, but I might not get that back. But I still think that that's a very small price to pay, mm -hmm. considering wow. what could have been. I think the moral of the story is if you have a back pain that's that bad that develops uh, further, you must do something yeah. about it. Because I had a slip disc and I really didn't want to do anything until I was sitting in a restaurant having lunch and I suddenly couldn't get up and I couldn't get from the chair. And I remember Terrifying. they had to more or less carry me and put me in a cab straight to hospital. And I suppose as I've got older, I have taken more care of my health because of situations like that. And I know the euphoria you feel when you come round from mm. the operation. And I said, whatever you do, I want to be able to walk to the bathroom. And I could. Ah. Uh. Yeah, uh, you know, and since then, obviously, I've broken my ankle and, uh, and that's been fixed. And then last year, uh, year before last, I had a knee replacement. Oh, my goodness. I mean, the pain you have recovering mm. from that. You, I wasn't prepared for it. I did all the physio. I've heard that, that some people have immediately said, oh, do I regret having it done? Oh, yeah, I think <coughs> the knee replacement, you have to do the physio, take it really seriously to, to keep mobile, and then the nerve damage takes about a year uh, to go. But, mm. you know, I'm fine now, but I'm so competitive, I've had to learn not to keep pushing myself to the yeah. limit. Yeah. Because yeah. that way you do harm all your joints. Well, I, I'm glad to hear that people are starting to take more care of themselves and their health at 40, because I don't know about you guys, but I feel guilty for not. Mm. I feel like, you know, I don't know if it's just a, a, a female as a woman and, and having so much to have to contend with and deal with on a day-to-day, -day, but I just 
sometimes I just put myself last in the line. I you think as well, I mean, I feel very you. lucky that when I was younger, we didn't have social media because I think that puts the fear of God into people about certain things that you maybe just brushed off and life was much more carefree. Mm. Obviously, um, when I was, I didn't really think much about my health either way, but then when I was 32 and I had Matty, that's when I got severe postnatal depression. So I was mm. thrust into what has become living with, with you know, with mm. bad episodes of clinical depression. Um, but at least we're talking more about mental health now and people, you know, looking mm -hmm. at that. But it doesn't necessarily be an age thing. My mum, and I think sometimes, um, you know, w w with women, they just get on with stuff. Mm. And my mum's... Um, my mum didn't tell us, but she'd had this thing, what she just felt was like having a piece of apple stuck in her throat yeah. for a long time. Mm -hmm. She just ignored it. It was going to the dentist that he discovered that she had um, cancer of the soft palate. Well, he discovered oh, she had a cancer, geez. which was cancer of the soft palate. But mum just, you know, you just, oh, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing. So there's a, there's a balance, I think, between trying to avoid health anxiety, but also you yeah. know, looking after mm -hmm. yourself as well. And being able just to talk and not because, oh, you know, if you need to, if, whether it's to a friend or yeah. to a medical professional, voice your concerns to someone because mm -hmm. if you don't uh, Google illnesses, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to die That's the next day. That's not always a good thing either. Um, thank you, ladies.